Shamita, uh, I am absolutely delighted to have you on Film Mission Me once again. Uh, our last chat was actually in, I think, what, December, January time for Black Film. Yes, and yes. Now you've literally uh, come out as a finalist uh, in BBOTT and now you're set to go into Big Boss 15. So, you know, I mean, you know, it, it's been quite an experience for you as well, especially on the BBOTT as well. So now that you are heading into Big Boss 15, I mean, what do you think will be the mindset for you uh, for the show, especially? Um, well, um, I am a little nervous because uh, um, I'm a little nervous about this jungle theme. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> There's so much of hearing about this jungle theme and the survival kit that you have to kind of, uh, <coughs> uh, you're going to be given in the beginning or whatever. Uh, so I wasn't expecting that. And um, I think it's, it's, it's now um, uh, I, I'm, I'm kind of uh, wondering what the hell I got myself into. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> But I mean, it's okay, whatever it is now, I just have to suck it up and just get on with it. Um, yeah. Whatever it is, it'll just work itself out. That's the beauty about you though, Shamita, is that you just go with it. You know, I think that's exactly, yeah. that has definitely been the theme, I think, about your journey, especially on Big Boss ODT. Um, yeah, so my journey in life. I just go with it. Essay <laughs> ro. <laughs> but do you know what I was gonna say, Shamita, this time? You know, agar aapko gussa hai na, do you know what you should do? And if someone starts saying things about you and your professional life and whatever, do you know what you should be like? You should be like mehu ek sharara and give that as a response back to them. <laughs> you see how literally, how literally they will not say anything towards you. They'll just literally shut up there and then. So you should definitely <laughs> I'm going to try that. Yeah. I'm going to try that. <laughs> yeah, try it. I think it'll work. But, you know, I think, um, Shabita, I really love that sort of bonds you created in Big Boss OTT, actually. I mean, you shared a solid relationship with Neha, um, which was admirable. And then obviously not forgetting Rakesh. And I think a lot of the fans coin you both as Shara. And it's really cute to see the edits that they put up and the pictures that they put up. I know it is. It is. <laughs> so I guess how have these bonds transpired post the show? Ah, uh, um, well, I mean, um, Neha and I, um, we're still the same. I, I met her when I got out. I, I really missed her because I was so used to having her there as well. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, uh, 24 seven. Uh, so initially it was literally us sending each other messages and, oh my God, I miss you. You know, I, I, I miss, you know, just seeing you in the morning because you were so used to jumping on each other in the morning and just like hugging each other. <laughs> right. uh, but uh, she's lovely. She's just lovely. And she was there for me um, unconditionally in there. And uh, I will never, never forget that. Hmm. Um, with Rakesh as well, um, we had always decided that, you know, we will sort of uh, get to know each other better outside the house. Uh, didn't get a chance to do much of that because I'm going back in. But... The uh, <laughs> so, literally, for the third time. Yeah, now. <laughs> and without him. So, yeah. um, well, um, it's, it's, it's a beautiful uh, uh, relationship that I share with him as well. So um, I just have to kind of get back to, uh, both of us have to kind of get to it once I'm out of the house now. Hmm. Um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think also um, BB15 is going to be quite special. I mean, like you said, you know, it's got the jungle theme and, you know, uh, it looks very, very exciting for us as viewers. I mean, I feel sorry for you as housemates because God knows what you guys are going to have to endure. But uh, I think it'll be very wonderful to see. But um, as you know, Pratik will, will be there uh, in the house. He was obviously the first confirmed contestant um, to participate on the show. And you obviously have a camaraderie with him, which I think seems to be quite a cordial and nice one. Yeah. Um, so do you think that will be um, comforting for you because of the fact that you have that familiarity with him? Um, and how would you feel if you saw others uh, from the OTT season uh, within this house as well? Um, with Pratik, I think he's a little unpredictable. We don't know how he's going to be, um, you know, when we go in. He may be Pratik from the first week, mm. uh, OTT, uh, first week. So we don't know. But I mean, um, I kind of understood him a little, uh, you know, while on that show. And I know he's a, he's a nice guy deep down. So 
whatever it is in the first few weeks, he'll eventually be back. Uh, I, I know that. So there's hope. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I'll be most happy to see anyone from uh, uh, the OTT uh, platform, you mm. know, I, I, cause at least we know each other. Yeah. Uh, now we're going to be getting to know, you know, people from scratch. And that's difficult to take some time. Mm. So uh, yeah, I'll be happy to see any, anybody from uh, the OTT platform. I hope Neha comes in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was so much fun. So much fun. So uh, she should have been a finalist, to be honest. I think she should have been in the. I was very disappointed and sad when she was. She didn't make it to the final. Yeah, I, I was quite surprised myself. She, she's, and she's such a lovely person. She's, um, carefree. Yeah, you know, and uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I guess it takes time for people to sort of uh, uh, accept that. Absolutely. I love that. Okay. Yeah, and I'm really glad that you mentioned this, actually, because, you know, I think it was quite a, a difficult journey, I think, for you, I think, emotionally as well, because, um, you know, a lot of the times, especially I, met, I I saw a lot of the times that, you know, you felt very uncomfortable and naturally, you know, with people labeling you as like arrogant and snobbish in the house, you know, there was a lot of times when, you know, you even spoke out against that and, you know, you try to justify yourself and all of that. But why do you think that, you know, sort of people got that impression and, do you, you like, do you fear that sort of labeling happening again in the house this time around again as well? And what will be your approach to deal with it? Should it happen again? It's definitely going to happen again. Uh, a lot of people, I think, will also use that. Uh, they will try and play on that. You know, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, but it's fine. I mean, I am who I am at the end of the day. See, uh, whatever it is, I think a lot of people out there um, have these preconceived notions about me. And one of the reasons why I went into the house uh, was because I wanted people to get to know me, mm. uh, you know, uh, apart from, I mean, sans all of the, you know, the background that I came from and you know, the general perception of people uh, out there and all of that. You know what I mean? Because mm. I wanted them to understand who I was as a person. And deep down, I am someone who is, who is simple and has a solid foundation. Um, yeah. My my ideas of right and wrong don't change because of uh, the platform mm -hmm. I'm on. Mm -hmm. You know, any platform anywhere in the world, my, my idea of right and wrongs stay the same. Um, so, and I'm somebody who, who I think has a very strong point of view about things. And maybe because of that, I come across bossy, uh, mm -hmm. Arrogant, I don't know why. Arrogant, maybe uh, because I'm an introvert and I take my time to open up. So maybe yeah. that comes across as arrogant. Mm. But I'm not someone who has been um, a mean human being. No. Uh, you know, no. Uh, to people. Uh, I think I mostly went into defense mode in the house. I, I did what I did only when I felt attacked. Sure. I never went after someone. Uh, to pull them down or, uh, you know, uh, made my own strategies to target someone, uh, manipulate someone. I, I, that's not something I do. So uh, people can sit and label me and, you know, all of that. At the end of the day, I know who I am as a person. I know I'm, I'm a good human being. Um, so as long as I, I'm confident about that, uh, nobody can uh, shake my foundation. I'm clear about that. That is so, so wonderful to hear, Shamita. And I think that's so important. And I think what I also like about you um, is the fact that you're so honest. You know, it's this honesty that's there, you know. And I think that's something which I really admire uh, in a person is that honesty. In fact, you were very open about your personal life in the show, actually. Uh, at times, I was just like, is she even allowed to say these things? Like, is she? <laughs> like, I mean, you know, I felt quite bad for you. I was like, is she allowed to do these things? But, you know, you, you were quite open about it, you know, regardless of, um, you know, especially during, like, the whole current situations that you're going through, how your personal life, to an extent, uh, impacted your career, especially when it comes to, you know, when you're related to someone who is, you know, very successful, like your sister, of course. So, I guess by addressing these things, do you kind of feel like it was was a burden off your shoulders and just saying like huh just get it over and done with everyone knows about it now and now everyone can acknowledge me for me yeah it was definitely um 
I don't believe in running away from things. You know what I mean? If there's mm. an issue, I'd much rather just like talk about it. If there's an issue with me, not my, not the people I'm connected with. Mm. You know what I mean? True. Today, that is something I'm, I'm allowed to talk about because it's in my hands. It's my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't like to just uh, hold on to excess baggage unnecessarily. And yes, there was a lot that was happening with my family when I went, and I was facing a lot unnecessarily because I was connected. True. Um, and 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 that is also one of the reasons I think why I I decided to keep my commitment and go into the house because all of this happened after um, I had decided to go in. True. So so. Um, my family also at that time felt it was best if I was just locked away, you know, uh, yeah. in that house. Um, mm. Because I was subjected to things unnecessarily. Mm. Uh, but I think it worked. It worked for me. Mm-hmm. It, was, um, it was difficult for me initially because I was, I, I was really worried uh, about my family, wondering if everyone was okay. But um, things sort of fell into place for me. Sure. Sure. I mean, obviously the fact that, you know, uh, like, was there ever, like, what was, was there ever fear in you, Shamita, I think, of going into BBOTT? And now that, you know, you've come out of it, do you have any fears or apprehensions about Big Boss 15? Like, do you feel that maybe, like, um, you, you're you worried about anything that could possibly maybe damage you or, you know, perhaps, you know, I guess, take a dent, make a dent on you as a person as well? Do you have any fears of that sort? And how do you hope to conquer that? No. I have no fears. I take it on as the next challenge. And uh, whatever it is, um, I'll be shown the right path. Mm-hmm. I'll choose the right path. Mm-hmm. I would Because I, I want to choose the right path always. So right. um, I think when you have that intent, things sort of just naturally fall into place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And is there any sort of particular personalities that you're dreading to meet or any personalities which you're looking forward to meeting actually as well? No, I mean, um, no one I'm really dreading. Uh, <laughs> yes, I, I I, mean, there's hope. I, I can only hope and pray that I get along with everyone. You never know what happens in the house. And, um, you know, situations are very difficult in there. Big Boss will create situations to get you out of your comfort zone. Mm. So, um, uh, I, I just pray and hope that, um, look, I mean, I know that I'm getting into a madhouse, <laughs> you know, I'm not exactly going to a spa or, uh, or uh, you know what I mean? A meditation retreat. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh God. I, I, I know what I'm getting into. So, um, but I just hope that, uh, we, all just remember that we're human mm. and uh, you know we don't cross those lines that should not be crossed mm-hmm. and obviously because um shilpa when she was on celebrity big brother i mean i still remember that moment where you know things happened with her and it was so so frustrating for us to literally sit in our living rooms and observe what was happening with her and the way she played in 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 big brother was so wonderful you know i mean the extreme circumstances she faced was something which i don't think any of us had imagined i'm sure you guys didn't even imagine it as well as family um but i think because she's had such an experience um of the show has she ever given you any advice in that sense you know um in, in in that sort of way uh to sort of i guess keep your cool and you know sort of play i guess more of course, I mean, um, she's my sister. So, you know, uh, she had a lot of advice to give me. There were, there were points where I lost my cool as well. I remember. Uh, um, mm. I'm sure. And mm. I'm also an introvert. I also get into my shell. I take my time to, you know, uh, maybe forgive, but not forget. Mm. Um, but... Um, so, I mean, there, there are a lot of things that she did as a sister advised me on. And uh, mm-hmm. um, I, I've definitely taken everything that she said into account. Yeah, it's, it's in there. That's great. That's wonderful. I think on a final, final note, um, because I know we've got to wrap up, I think it's a very important note, actually, because I wanted to you know mention this to you as well, because... Um, 
you know, I could empathize and admire your courage to speak openly about your colitis, you know, because I've got cousins who have actually suffered, who suffer from, from that. And I know it's a very, very painful digestive illness and it really has a huge, huge um, mark on, on, on the way we live. I mean, I have digestive issues too, so I can relate so much with that as well in that sense. But why do you think that it isn't spoken much about in society and how, if at all, do you kind of intend on raising more awareness of it? Um, especially because a lot of people mocked you for having gluten sort of foods and stuff like that in the house. I didn't quite understand the seriousness of the illness. Yeah. And I kind of got angrier over that actually as well sometimes. Uh, well, that's exactly it. People don't understand the seriousness of it. Uh, there are so many bigger issues that uh, people don't really, this is too small uh, an issue for them. But then for a person suffering from uh, colitis, it's very mm. frustrating because you yeah. want to, you want to be able to eat the normal stuff, but you can't because then you're in pain. Exactly. You know, and why put yourself through that unnecessary pain? And it's also a psychosomatic uh, disease, a problem. Mm. So um, mm. there's a lot that you have to sort of do for yourself because your body otherwise automatically reacts uh, to what is externally happening around you. It's not mm. stuff that you can talk about. But um, I don't know, people need to be a little more sensitive uh, they look at it as a rich man's disease. Oh, really? Maybe. Oh, my God. Maybe. Uh, because the whole gluten thing and all, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, you know, it's more just expensive. Like that, uh, yeah, 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 they don't understand. I mean, I'd be more than happy eating wheat and all of that. It's not a weight thing. It's not, it's not for me to maintain my weight, for yeah. heaven's sake. It's just for me to be in less pain. Exactly. Um. And uh, there were times when I had to really, like, I didn't like telling people not to eat my food. Who wants to do that? If yeah. we're in the outer world, I'd buy more food and give them. Yeah. But the problem here is you're in that house, you're given ration. Of course. You know, and it's not up to you. So you either go hungry or, you know, you share, you know what I mean? Or, or you say what you have to and you keep your food. Yeah. Now, if that makes me a bad person, then so be it. It's not like there is another food. But for those people who are eating other food also and eating gluten-free food like a snack, I had an issue with that. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I completely understand. And like I said, I just wish people are a lot more sensitive because this is a very painful... I know what it's like because I've witnessed it myself and I know how difficult it is. But I think that's exactly what makes you a warrior, Shamita. You know, the fact that, you know, you've been you, you've been very unapologetic about being you. And I think that's what I love to see. The fact that you're not afraid to be vulnerable. You're not afraid to kind of uh, show your emotions. And I love that. And I think... I'm very much looking forward to seeing you in Big Boss 15. And, uh, you know, I literally, for, in preparation for our interview today, I've been watching all your songs, like Chori Pe Chori, Sharara Sharara. I've been listening to all of that <laughs> just to kind of get me into the frame of mind. And I think it's going to be wonderful. And yeah, do remember that little catchphrase I told you to use. Trust me. Oh, yes. It'll work. Yes. Yeah, this is me. I'm a Sharara. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. I love that. Absolutely. Absolutely, Shamita. But look, I'm wishing you all the very best, Shamita, and I cannot wait to um, catch up with you after the show, and I'm sure you're going to be an absolute dynamite. So wishing you all the very best and lots of love and wishes to you. Thank you so much. Loads of love. Bye-bye. Bye, Shamita. Thank you.